This is a piece by a group called the Gorilla Girls, spelled like Gorilla Warrior versus Gorilla the Monkey, or the Great Ape. Um, and it is titled, Do Women Have to Be Naked to Get into the Metropolitan Museum? from 1989. Um, it says, less than 5% of the artists in the modern art sections are women, but 85% of the nudes are female. Now, uh, this collective of women artists, it has grown. They like to stay an anonymous. Uh, they call themselves Gorilla Girls, as in Gorilla Warrior, but they do wear ape masks in public to hide their identities. So, this is one of 30 posters published in a portfolio entitled Gorilla Girls Talk Back by the group of an anonymous American female artist who call themselves the Gorilla Girls. Uh, since their inception in 1984, the Gorilla Girls have been working to expose sexual and racial discrimination in the art world. Yes, the art world, this big, fat, liberal, anything-goes society is just as racist and just as misogynistic as the rest of society. I'm sure all the ladies in the room are quite shocked. So, the group's members protect their identities by wearing gorilla masks in public and by assuming pseudonyms taken from such deceased famous female figures as Gertrude Stein and Frida Kahlo. They formed in response to an international survey of painting and sculpture that was held in 1984 at the Museum of Modern Art, which that means is there was a big gallery exposition of international artists, and it was supposed to cover everything. Um, however, <laughs> the work included, or the, the exhibition included work from 169 artists, and less than 10% were women. Although female artists had played a central role in experimental American art of the 70s, with the economic boom of the early 80s in which artworks prices rose steeply, the presence in museum and gallery exhibitions diminished dramatically. So there were tons and tons and tons of new hot to trot female artists that were making all kinds of stuff in the 70s. And everybody was going on and on about, you know, they were really kicking ass. This was not only true in visual art, but even in music with, you know, uh, The Runaways, Joan Jett, Hart, Stevie Nicks, all, you know, there was music and movies. Women were becoming quite the art scene, you know, heroes. However, when the 80s came along and Wall Street was taken over and the rich were getting richer and the poor was getting poorer and, you know, uh, art became a hot commodity for the new, the brand new wealthy people to buy, um, art by women just suddenly wasn't getting sold. So dubbing themselves as, quote, the conscience of the art world, in 1985, the Gorilla Girls began a poster campaign that targeted museums art dealers, art curators, art critics, and other artists who they felt were actively responsible for or complicit in the exclusion of women and non-white artists from mainstream exhibitions and publications. So they, they took it to the streets and they started using graphic design and art and printmaking and poster making and just started hammering these people. <clears throat> now, um, let's see here. So the Gorilla Girls appropriated the visual language of advertising, specifically something called fly pasting, um, in New York especially, but in any large city. Uh, you know, telephone poles, abandoned buildings, windows, uh, construction sites, whatever. Fly pasting is where, you know, the famous image from cartoons of the guy with a bunch of rolls of paper under one arm and a bucket of glue and a brush on the other, and they would put these up on walls. So fly pasting is what that was called, uh, or fly, fly posting, I'm sorry, to convey their message in a quick and accessible manner. So they're throwing up these advertisements. 
They pasted up their first posters in uh, Soho in New York City in the middle of the night. Uh, they combined bold block texts and lists and statistics that were compiled by the girls themselves or reinterpreted from existing data, art magazines, and museum reports. The posters named New York galleries that showed no more than 10% women artists and listed successful male artists who allowed their work to be shown in galleries showing little or no work by women, so they shamed the artist as well. Other posters, such as We Sell White Bread, uh, first appeared as a peel-off stickers on gallery windows and doors. So they would, you know, and those things were hard to scrape off. Um, and let's see here. Uh, one of their posters was called The Advantages of Being a Woman Artist. Um, and then one of them said, Relax, Senator Helms, the art world is your kind of place. Now, I have to give you some context for that because you're, maybe, maybe a couple of you may know. I know some people, but anyway, who was Senator Jesse Helms? Well, Senator Jesse Helms was an extremely old racist senator from either North or South Carolina who believed in segregation, who kept getting reelected, and who was absolutely, totally, and completely against any type of tax funding for artwork of any kind. He found it horrifying that tax money would go to support arts, whether it be music, painting, didn't matter. Um, he was a horrible human being. He lived to be almost 100, and he was in the Senate until he was in his 90s. Um, so when they say, relax, Senator Helms, the art world is your kind of place, they were basically saying, you know, everybody in the, the American art world is uh, just like you. Um, they used wit and irony to point a critical finger at the double standards. The group gradually widened their focus, tackling issues of racial discrimination in the art world, and also made more direct politicized interventions. Um, let's see, what else did they do? Do, 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 So this print that we're looking at here is based on the 1989 poster that asks, what do women have to be naked to get into the Met Museum? Above a reclining naked woman who wears a gorilla mask, the image is based on the famous painting by Jean-Auguste Dominique Ingres entitled Odalesque and the Slave from 1842 and is accompanied by the facts less than 3% of the artists in the modern arts section are women, but 85% of the nudes are female. The poster was originally designed to be a billboard but it was rejected on the grounds of not being clear enough. The Guerrilla Girls themselves recount, we then rented an advertising space on New York City buses and ran it ourselves until the bus company canceled our lease, saying that the image was too suggestive and that the figure appears to have more than just a fan in her hand. So, um, this was controversial because it was artists taking the art world to task. Uh, it, was, it was considered controversial because it was demanding equality and making fun of these hallowed artistic institutions. Now, in response to this, we have this piece, Olympia, by the famous artist Edouard Manet from 1863. Um, at first glance... There's nothing really shocking about it. Nudes were quite prominent um, throughout all of the 17th, 18th, 19th century, even as far back as the Renaissance. Um, but this one, when it was unveiled and exhibited, uh, it shocked everyone. And... I've asked students in the past, well, what do you think was so shocking about it? And most people point to the African-American attendant or the, the, the African attendant, because this would have been in France, uh, being in the room while a white woman was naked. 
it's a it's a good guess, but it's something much less than that. Um, so this says basically what's controversial today may not be so tomorrow. For example, in 1956, Elvis Presley was the devil. And had those people lived to see someone like Marilyn Manson, they may have thought, wow, Elvis is, is pretty laid back. So while the female nude was then a common subject for painters, even enlightened viewers were shocked at Edward Manet's Olympia. And the main reason is, is the defiant expression directed at the viewer or some unexpected caller and the sexuality of it was casual. She's a prostitute. And because she's not shying away or an innocent like Athena being born out of a clamshell or something like that, because she's laying there ready, looking right at the viewer, almost as if to say, are you next? Um, it freaked people out because nudes before this were always, oh, I got caught in the moment or, oh, it's just from behind or, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an imaginary creature like a nymph or a, a fairy or an elf or some goddess from ancient Greek lore. I'm, I'm not a sexual thing. I'm, I'm this. Whereas Manet painted a woman who was obviously open for business, as they used to say. I mean, even her shoes are still on. So, and the fact that he had the woman looking directly at the viewer uh, made people decry it as pornography. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of, uh, I guess, hair splitting, um, but it was considered quite scandalous simply because she's looking right at you like, do you like what you see? Um, you know, so there was nothing subtle about it. There was no innocence or no anything like that. It was just straight on sex. 